So we will now shift to the peer review process uh, by the hand of uh, Professor Sebastian Le Commandeur, Associate Editor of Biomacromolecules. Uh, he will explain us why, how to, and what not to do um, when going through or being actively peer reviewing. So we are running a bit late, but uh, I'll try to, I do my best to go as fast as I can. And uh, I think peer review is maybe something that you are interested in. And uh, I'll try to uh, uh, make it short, but uh, raise, the, raise most of the important points. Um, and of course, my, my colleagues and friends, editors, can also uh, complement the questions. Uh, how do I, can I just pick it from here? Yeah? Okay. Okay. It's going to work. Uh, if your paper doesn't fit, uh, 
Then it goes, uh, it can go for external peer review. Uh, and you have an editorial, editorial, an editorial decision. And from that, a decision can be uh, reject, revise, or accept. And revise can be minor revision, or can be major revision. Of course, if it's minor re revision, it's close to be accepted. It's not accepted yet. If it's major revision, you can go this way. So basically, you can go this way, or you can go this way if you want. And after that, eventually, yeah, another decision is resolution. So basically, if the editor thinks that the revision that are asked are uh, too important or will take too much time, because there's a significant amount of uh, experimental work to be performed for paper to be acceptable, then eventually uh, a risk a rejected and submitted decision uh, can be provided. So this is the, the whole scenario of the whole structure. Um, of course, uh, this is the first important step. So there is an editorial review. So this is the work that we all do uh, every day. And this is the first first filter. And what we are looking at is uh, first the scope. We talk about it. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, the, the paper is fitting with the scope of the journal. So what, what are the expectations that we have? Scientific merit is important. And, and the significance of it. And, and I will come back to this. What was the meaning of significance? We all have different understanding of significance. Um, and from that, the paper goes through the review process, process or not. And uh, this, this, this first step is very important. Uh, and I don't know what's your, I don't know if I can ask for numbers, but I don't know what's your rejection rate. I mean, after editorial review, but it's quite high. I cannot provide numbers because numbers are quite confidential. But it's this. The paper that are not sent for review uh, is quite a high number. Uh, and it's not, uh, again, it's not a uh, punishment. It's, uh, it's because every, 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 everybody will just waste time if a paper goes for review. It's not in the scope. Review would tell us something in the scope. Uh, if we believe the, the paper is a not significant enough, again, the reviewers will tell us something. So this is some, some time or responsibility to do it. But again, it's to just to save time to all the community and to enter the author as well. As well. So then you can you submit another journal that will be more appropriate and eventually we provide guidelines uh, for you to do that. Um, of course, if, if we look in more detail, so the appropriate scope, uh, we, we talk about it already, so I don't know if I, if I need to insist on that. Uh, there is a scope on every journal, so you can look at it. It's uh, generally a paragraph, and it's uh, perfectly described. And we really, really spend a lot of time to make the scope clear, as clear as possible. You can also look at the, 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 what's the, the all the editors are doing. We also provide you a, a, an idea. And then we, we look at the novelty or urgency of, uh, of the work. Is it novel enough? Urgent enough to be published, significant enough, so urgency is particularly important for letters. Uh, you know, a letter is not a mini paper, with uh, not enough data for a full paper. This is not the idea of a letter. A letter it has to be something to be published. Uh, I don't know if you have letters in the journal of we don't have them. Uh, so in, in SSMI, we yeah, have letters, so yeah. not common, but. Do you agree on that? A letter is not a short paper. No, it has a letter is a full story. Absolutely, you have to be able to urgent to be put. Absolutely, you have to be able to judge the scientific content of the paper based on whether it's a letter or whether it's a paper. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, uh, technical validity is important. So we have to. I mean, we look if the experiments are well designed. Yes. Uh, if the graphs are properly. Uh, interpreted or if uh, they are properly yeah. bone, there are major errors, and of course the general type quality of the content. You have to pay attention to the quality of the figures, to the quality of, um, of your writing, and, and, and everything. If you have a lot of grammatical errors, it makes it possible to understand the meaning of, uh, of, the, of the research. Uh, it, will, it, will be, uh, it will be very, 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 very difficult for any reviewers to, uh, to interpret. 
So, so now I just want to give a few words about, uh, about that, about the uh, difference between novelty, significance, and the impact. This, this was our report. Um, very often, we do see novel, especially in Paris. I, mean, I don't know how uh, the other journals are managing with that, but uh, generally, generally managing editors uh, ask the author to remove novel, new, whatever titles, because it doesn't have any meaning. You know, novel can be new and not resembling something formerly known and used. This is, you know, definition coming from, from, from that. But it can be novel and completely uninteresting. You know? So novel is fine, but, uh, but, uh, but it has to be significant. Significance is, is, is more important. Significant, again, the definition is large enough to be noticed so have an effect. But this is very important. And impact, we talk a lot about impact, impact factor, and impact of things. The, the meaning is somehow, somehow with, with bad meaning. It's strong and, and often bad effect. It can be also a good effect. Uh, and of course, impact is something that uh, will be seen by the audience. Uh, so these are very important. This is. <coughs> Novelty, and when we do have letters, oh, this is novel, and we see it's new things. Okay, it's new, but uh, who cares? You know, nobody cares. It's just new for some. Um, so why why this uh, this pre screen is uh, is, is done is uh, is really to, uh, to 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 go as fast as possible and to, and to save time and energy. You know, we have a, more and more journals. Uh, reviewers are more and more uh, asked to, to work, and, uh, and and I think we have to uh, we have to focus on what what we need to be to do Of course, if you disagree, you can appeal. There are some appeal procedures, so you can appeal to the to the, to the, to the, to the main chief editor, uh, to the main office. But of course, if you do that, you have really to justify why you are doing that. Uh, and of course, appealing is a decision that is not so common, and so you have to really do it when it's really appropriate. Because people were just, you know, appealing because they wanted appealing without without good, without not so good reason. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not it's not really fair. The whole system and it's not really well appreciated. Of course, if you think that it's really uh, not justified, if you have good reason for that, of course you have you are welcome to do it. Sometimes we should just revise. Or opinion because we don't know everything. Sebastian, just a, a quick question here. How often, in your experience, are these decisions reversed upon um, appeal? I mean, we, we can we can all, all comment on that, but um, in my case, I don't have so many appeal. So it does not happen so much. So it's it's really something uncommon. It's really rare, and, and it's just because we try to be as professional and as fair as possible. And you know, especially in ICS, we are, we are authors. Uh, so we, we know how it is and we know how difficult it is to, uh, to submit a paper and to write a paper. So we really try to be really fair and to provide reason why this is rejected. And also to provide some uh, also guidelines uh, for uh, submitting somewhere else, if it's uh, not in the scope or whatever. Uh, so we don't have so many, so much appeal, and sometimes it's, uh, it's maybe it's probably less than you know, so we change the or I mean, at least my case, I don't know if you have any more furniture. I think it's a good question about the yeah, appeal or decision. Uh, how do you manage as an editor? if you clearly see that there's a conflict of interest between reviewer and author. So how can you manage this? Uh, you cannot say to a reviewer, I'm sorry, I will not take into account your review because I see clearly. But if the uh, author clearly demonstrates the conflict of interest, how can you manage to make your decision with this review? Uh, maybe you can, yeah, I can answer that actually. So, uh, so this, is very, this is very important, this question. It comes down to the ethics of peer review. And if you have a conflict of interest, you must disclose it when, if you've been offered to review a manuscript. 
Additionally, if the author thinks that someone's competing in the same area and they would not like them to be uh, named as a, a, a review your manuscript, you have to provide very good reason, mention why, and we do consider, the editors do consider these. Uh, yes. You can always write in your cover letter if you have, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And actually, uh, ACS has a reviewer lab course which takes you through uh, the ethics of peer review and a whole range of things. I'm happy to talk about that as well at the end, if there's time. So this is a very important point. So generally, we do have an editorial assistant who are really taking care of that, pay attention, attention to that. And we, we, are, we have some adults. We are some care. Uh, Sometimes you do see uh, from reviews that indeed the, the comments are not fair. And of course, it's a uh, wrong appreciation. And, uh, and we have the, the right and the ability to discard the review because we believe it's not appropriate. No, and, and, and we do it. Uh, it's, it's really, it has to be scientifically agreed. Right? It's the only thing that we value. That we, that we, that we, that we. Um, of, uh, now, uh, the, the, the selection of the peer review, peer reviewers, of course, what we look at is the, the, the general interest, uh, the technical expertise in the, in the area, and the ability to offer uh, constructive and fair and yes, uh, and, and we do have also an internal kind of way to evaluate the reviewers. So the reviewer is important to know that you are a good reviewer or not. Uh, if you provide a fair review or not. Uh, so as a reviewer, you, have, you really have a, a very important responsibility uh, for, the, for the community, and we know that. Um, of course, uh, you need to avoid as an author uh, friends, collaborators. Uh, there are many ways to cross-check Verify that, and uh, we know if you, have, if you publish already with a suggested reviewer, we know it, and, uh, uh, and we know you, are, you have not been really fair in your, in your presentation, which is not really great, and you you can avoid you can put also everyone the conflict you can you can you can avoid that, you can wait, um, and then you suggest reviewers. Uh, we do pick reviewers and we do as we want. We can take uh, some of the reviewers that you suggested or not. Uh, this is a wrong decision. And I don't know how we all do this, I think we all do different. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we can share uh, some. Yeah. I also, there is another important point when you put the email address of the reviewers, please use institutional email address <coughs> because we had so many problems with that. So it's like non institutional. Email address like Yahoo, Google, whatever it is. In general, we we'll avoid that. So, if it's you want, you know, out of the list of the suggested reviewers, potentially would take one or not. At least put the institutional email addresses, please. But are you taking some? Uh, honestly, yeah. I don't. Okay. Um, I do it when I make the search for, you know, the topic. And indeed, the suggested names come out often. It means they're really leaders in the field. And also, if I see there is no common publications with the authors. Otherwise, I take my reviewers. I can share my experience about selecting reviewers because it's quite new for me. So uh, in the last year, what I do is I read first very carefully the paper, introduction, the references in the introduction to capture who is working in the field. And then I go to the references in the discussion to see what are the people involved in the, that would be involved in the, in, in the results by being agreeing or disagreeing. <laughs> and then only, so from this I make a first selection of my potential choice of reviewers. And then I look at the review, at these potential reviewers area and work publication, where they publish, what kind of work they publish. And then I cross it with the reviewers, uh, pre preferred reviewers of the, of the author. Sometimes it's very good because it's complementary. Sometimes it's at the opposite. And sometimes reviewers are preferred and I discover they have published together 
they are friends, they met in conferences and blah, blah, blah. And this is very bad. It's not professional. So please be aware yeah. that you will be, the reviewers will be selected about the con technical and scientific issues first. And of course, I always balance my choices between generally having 50% of preferred reviewers plus my 50% own choice. Yeah, I, I basically fully agree on that. Um, just one comment about the non-preferred reviewers. Um, because you can uh, suggest non-preferred reviewers. And it happens to me to select uh, some of them sometimes when I feel that this guy is really important in the field. And you'll be surprised to see that, I would say most of the time, the non-preferred reviewers I select are really fair. They are critical, but uh, they are really fair. And, and, and you would be surprised that sometimes preferred reviewers are real bastard with you. So pay attention. No, really, really. It, it's really amazing sometimes. Because I select some of the time the, the preferred review, reviewers, at least one, 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 one maximum, sorry. And, and, and sometimes you think that this guy is a friend, would be friendly to you, and, and it's not. It really kills the paper. So, you know, when I select preferred reviewers and non-preferred reviewers, I balance their opinion. I, take into consideration there are preferred reviewers and non-preferred reviewers, but sometimes, um, yeah, select the, the reviewers with, with care. Okay. Well, yeah, thank you guys. So, I think I do the same. So, I generally, I, I, tr I avoid to take the preferred reviewers. This is not my first, my first choice. And uh, in, in the list you put, please don't put only people from, from your country or even from your own university, because it doesn't look good at all. And, and this is, uh, and this happens, right? This happens. It doesn't look good to do that, let's say. It's not, it's not professional. We try to be professional. Um, so now, uh, how does the editors make a decision? Good point. And this is a very important responsibility. And we, we all are aware that it's important responsibility I mean, for, for, for you or for us because uh, we have the same kind of decisions taken on our own way. But we know it's important. So of course what, what is important is to, uh, to, to read and examine the manuscript uh, on yourself, analyze each reviewing report. So we, we read everything in detail, we don't, we, we don't only look at uh, the general assessment of the referees, we just look if it's <coughs> Justified or not, from a scientific point of view. Uh, and then, of course, we look at the decision provided uh, from the referees, and we do provide a decision to the author based on that. And again, we can discard some comments from the referee because we consider it uh, unfair, or some justified, or there are some obvious competition or, 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 or a conflict of interest. And this is our own decision. Um, and the possible uh, decisions are accept as it is, doesn't happen, happen that much. Uh, uh, revise, minor or micro major, and again reject. And the rejection at this step, again, is based on, uh, on reviewers' comments. Uh, the revision that are requested, uh, they are just not impossible to make. If it's just another paper or another story that is uh, asked, uh, then the paper is. And eventually, we, 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 we propose, uh, as we have, this, we have seen earlier, a rejection and a submission. If we believe that the paper has, a, has an interesting meaning, has an interesting uh, message, but important experiments on this. Uh, you have a question on that? Yeah. In my personal experience, what I find quite frustrating sometimes with ACS, what happened to me, is as a reviewer, we don't always have a feedback. And sometimes it happened to me to provide careful review with major, uh, asking for major revisions, and the review was discarded, no reason why. And the, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, so, so. And how many reviewers do you contact for one? Paper actually. How many reviews per paper? Yeah. Ah. Uh, generally, we ask. We try to have uh, 
at least uh, three reports. Because of course two can be one pro, one against, and the third one will be the attached together somehow. Um, we, we try to have three. Sometimes we have more. And it's, it's a good thing, you know, sometimes when you have uh, four, five, or six reviews, because the paper is interesting. Because the review the reviewers that you invited were you know very excited to review it. So it's a good thing. Because we asked for five or six and we have then positive answers maybe for two or three. So we try to we try to have three to take on the And I understand your frustration as a referee because you don't know what's gonna happen after that. Uh, and, and sometimes the decision taken is against your own decision. But it's also because sometimes you consider the paper as major problems or whatever, but the two authors or three other referees consider the paper as great. Yeah, but you, uh, we don't have access to that. It's true, it's true, you don't know. And, and of course, what we do is we ask for revision, we have feedback from the authors, we analyze all the all that, we do a lot of work. Huh? <laughs> and if we consider that uh, the author answer your point correctly, then we accept the paper. And, and Sometimes we can send it back to you as a referee if, uh, if you consider it's not clear. But we try not to do it because then it's, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's a, not a waste of time. But spend, spend some time to do it. But if we consider it, everything is okay, we just, we just agree. But it's true, I mean, we don't provide a feedback. So, uh, were you talking about not seeing the other reviews as well? Yes, and about why the feedback is discarded. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. He's answered your feedback question, it is the editor's job to actually yeah. make his decision based upon every report. But also, uh, you do get feedback maybe depending on journal, not feedback, uh, the other. So uh, you do get to see some of the other reviews for certain journals. Uh, I know I have reviewed for high and I've seen uh, the other, other reviewers' comments as well. Maybe a journal specific thing. I suppose our editors are focused on uh, providing authors feedback if their manuscript is for example, I think that's also a no. step. No. Uh, the reviewers should get banking also something to be put it in just a technology contributions. We do talk to the budget and the make up we have. I, th I think it's uh, editor dependent because if I have a major revision, of course, if the paper was sent for revision, I systematically send it to the major. But it could be also so minor. Sometimes, and I have noticed some reviewers, for me, minor, you don't request to do additional experiments. But if you request additional experiments, it has to be major. And they have indeed some reviewers, they will put minor revision and they will request for additional experiments. And then again, when I send the revision, I send it also to the minor uh, review. Well, well the, the, the reviewers who requested minor revision, but normally major systematically will send it back. Except if it's a major, you just change a figure or a legend in a the figure, then we don't send it back. But if it's really a really common scientific comment, we should send it back. That's probably depend on the editor, but we do normally send it back. I, I just to say I, I do that too. Uh, about the 20 papers I had this year, maybe I send them back three times, back to major revision, to be reviewed again, to be sure that the reviewer would agree with the changes, because the, the novel, there was sufficient additions to be reviewed again. If it's not, then I, I read it myself and I, de I make the decision without sending back. Yeah, I agree on that. I, I slightly disagree with, with Sebastian's comment on, on the fact that uh, it's a waste of time or it takes a long, uh, a long time to send it back to the original reviewers because the original reviewers are quite happy we send back the revised version to them and they really quickly look at the, at the revised version and they tell me, say in, in, in one or two days, okay, I'm agree with the change, it's okay, you can publish that. And I think it's nice to send back uh, the uh, revised version, yeah. Yet yeah, more a general question. In, in other fields of, of research, there's also the possibility that under the publication, there is also the reviewer's comments, so that you have, even if you have access to the to the publication at the end, you see also what the other reviewers had asked to change or what they are thinking about, so that it's more yeah, an open system, so that also the author know who has reviewed them and yeah, what is the discussion about. So what are you thinking about to do at least an open system that also the authors know who is the reviewer, 
so that he's not, yeah, can hide about his anonymity with his comments, so that he has to be honest, but critical. I know some Can be interesting if it's uh, again if everything is fair, but if you know uh, sometimes it's not. So I think uh, the system as it is now is not that bad. Uh, it's, it's quite fair. Uh, making everything open, everything known is. Uh, I don't know if it's a good thing. But, but coming back to your first question, there is something. The first, the initial question was about you don't have. The real feedback at the end of the decision of what happened to the journal. And this is, ask uh, my managing editor about that. And I think SES is not doing that. And maybe not willing to do that, at least now. Some journals uh, are doing it. Uh, uh, I think RSC, some journals are doing that. Some of the editors are doing, are doing that. Um, <coughs> and I think it's, it's quite nice. But the referee wants to know what's, what's happened at the end. We are probably happy to know what's happening here. This additional work can be automatically sent. So I don't know if it's, uh, it can be implemented. Uh, no, that's a very good message. Yes, thank you. Charles. But I think it's, yeah, it can be great. As a referee, I would like that. So I have also questions. It's quite related to, to one of my colleagues. Uh, as far as no, we know that it's. Uh, a system where the, the name of the reviewer is known is not really welcome <laughs> because we, you will not have reviewer anymore. Uh, what about what is your feeling about a double-blind review, when where the reviewer do not know the name of the author? What is your feeling about this? It was I think it was tried by Nature or something also a double-blind. So what is your feeling as a as an editor about this system? This is an interesting point. It came up for discussion. I don't know if there's, uh, this is definitely interesting and it's being thought about all the time. So uh, it depends on how our editors feel, uh, what what steps they should move. Because I mean, you often, uh, when, when our staff travel, we often get questions about bias in certain countries, for example, and you know, it may help in that respect. Everyone's human at the end of the day, but. It's, it's something that's being considered. I, I don't know if there's any publisher who's doing double-blinded at the moment or any journal in chemical sciences. Yeah. OK, so yeah, I don't know if, well, what the reasons were for that, but it's definitely something we are thinking about closely. Yeah. No more question on that. I think we, we, we addressed a lot of things that are really that are in the presentation. Uh, so the next question is, uh, what should I use, uh, uh, or how should I use the reviewer's comments? Uh, so we talk about it uh, a little bit. Uh, of course, you need to read the decision letter very accurately, in detail. Try to understand the comments. Uh, of course, do all the necessary experiments uh, that are requested. If not, uh, you need to justify why, and you, you need to be on time. Uh, if you cannot complete the revision uh, with, uh, within the deadline, then you need to contact the office and you need, you need to request an extension. Otherwise, your, your manuscript will be automatically uh, discarded. And uh, you, you will have to resubmit that the whole process. You have to keep in contact with your editorial office uh, to, uh, to make sure of that. And then, of course, you need to respond to the review response. And this is a very, very important one. Uh, and you have to do that in a very, very accurate manner. Uh, of course, you need to prepare your response. Uh, and remember that uh, the reviewers are trying to improve the quality of the So You don't have to say, oh, he is wrong and he's always wrong, and the reviewer is wrong and I'm right. No, it doesn't make sense. So you have to explain why. If, uh, if the comments are not appropriate, you have to review, you have to cite all the reference, you have to make modifications. Uh, you disagree, of course, this is fine, you can disagree, but you have to, you have to explain. And remember that, uh, that, that and here what's important is that the better you, you provide, the better you make your answer, 
the faster it will go. Uh, and if you clearly answer any points, and if you clearly address uh, in a positive or negative manner, uh, it's, uh, the, the right argument, all the points raised, raised by the reviewer, we can we can do very fast in the editor. We can eventually directly agree to answer everything. Or we can send it back to the referee and the referee can again look very fast to what you did as corrections. And everything is a, is a smoother point. Uh, so really do it very careful uh, to, um, uh, to make the whole uh, to make the paper And of course, there are some com common mistakes uh, to avoid when responding to reviewer comments. So there are some points here. You may say, okay, the reviewer is not an expert. But I mean, you have to know that uh, the reviewer is uh, maybe someone that you suggested. Uh, again, you may say, oh, the reviewer misunderstood uh, the point of the manuscript. But it's maybe you weren't clear. And, and again, if the reviewer doesn't understand the points, maybe because uh, you didn't explain it well, or because you, your message is not clear enough. Uh, so again, it has to be readable, clear for uh, the readers. And if, it, if you improve your manuscript and if it's clearer for the reviewers, it will be clearer for the readers. And the paper will be you know, cited because people understand what's, uh, what, what you mean. But the end, you will win if you, if you do that in a better clear way. Sometimes you say, okay, the reviewer is wrong and does not deserve a response. Right? You have to respond, you have to agree. Or you may say, okay, so the papers have been published in the journal recently, so why my paper is, uh, is being rejected or being brought. And again, maybe it's because it's, uh, it's not significant enough, or it's not novel, or it's uh, now not done at the stop, or the story change, even though uh, some, uh, uh, some of the work uh, have been and there are a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of things that it's a lot of people, a lot of things. And, and again about reviewers, and we talk briefly about that, uh, the, the preferred reviewers, sometimes you think they are friends, but I mean, your friends kill you. <laughs> uh, and sometimes you are very angry and say, I know who is the reviewer, I know it is this guy. And very often you are wrong. But when I, when I heard that, of course we don't say anything, we have a, a very strict confidential uh, confidentiality to respect and do respect that, it's very important. But when we have some colleagues say, oh I know this guy who said my paper, he was the referee, sometimes we look at it and say, we, we just say ourselves, mm -hmm. this guy is wrong, it's not this guy, it's another guy, maybe he's thinking he's that. So don't do, don't do that. It's uh, just a waste of time to try to notify which is the reason because very often it's um, so again, what, what, where do I to become? I mean, how do I to become a referee? Uh, I think uh, we, we are all willing to contribute to the, to the publishing process, and being a referee is important. So of course, you need to publish adequate to work in order to do journals. This is a way you will be pick up uh, as a referee. Attending conference and networking is important. You have to make it known. Uh, of course, let your interest to be known to colleagues. To that, that, that do that in this work. And uh, again, when you are invited to review, provide timely, fruitful, serious reviews. If you do your job seriously, you will be asked to review more. Because if you don't want to review papers, do it the wrong way, you don't ask very much. But you have to continue to the that. So the anatomy of a good review is, uh, of course, we can go fast on that because it's quite obvious. We need, to, we need to make some kind of summary of the, of the manuscript, uh, put the work in the context, then discuss about the impact and the, what we believe is the, the important impact of this, uh, this work. You can comment about the scientific merits, uh, it's high level, the quality of the data is very important. Is the data and the correlation, the conclusion, uh, well uh, uh, attested by, by good experimental, experimental data? can comment about uh, the, the writing and then provide your recommendation. Of course, don't provide a recommendation based on the You have really to review uh, with all of that what would be your, your, your conclusion. And again, your comments are very important. 
You can also provide comments to the editor, which are uh, confidential. They, they will not be provided to the author. And here, what is important is there. So do not tell the editor the manuscript is unacceptable. And then your, uh, your comments for the paper, you put everything in gray. Or if you put uh, comments that are quite rude, and then at the end, if you made a minor revision, revi revision that's what's going on. So really take your own responsibility also as a degree. And we do our job after that, based on positive time. So we do that in the service. Um, so in a summary, uh, as an author, <coughs> these are the important, uh, important points and important guidelines. So the reviewers are not meant to be personal. Uh, everyone gets managed of time, so even the editors. And, and, and to be honest, of course, and, and I'm very happy, to, to be honest, I'm very happy when I have paper rejected in my own journal. Because I know the process, the reviewing process is really serious, so it's, uh, it's a good thing this happened also. It's, uh, it's, uh, and I think it's good to have it. Uh, if you become angry after reading the review, uh, then you know, don't answer. Uh, it's for everything, and don't answer email and email and you're angry, so wait, read again the, 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 the comments and before responding. And then your response has to be really professional and satisfactory. Uh, this, this, this is a very important point, and the detailed response uh, really highlighting why you change. And why you didn't change it. And then, as a reviewer, uh, you have to respond quickly. But of course, quick uh, is not uh, the most important point. You want the quality of the of the, of the review. Uh, if you are not able to review, then suggest other reviewers. Now, if it's not in your field, like the editor made a mistake or whatever, just tell it. Um, and then, of course, we discuss about that. So provide citation information where it's relevant to the reviewer. You can expect. A be uh, written way uh, and explain things. Um, again, there are some uh, guidelines and uh, nice videos on, uh, on the ACS uh, uh, website. So here there is uh, 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 this, uh, this uh, video here that explains uh, all the review processes. And there are a couple of videos on the ACS uh, uh, campus uh, uh, website. So there are kind of uh, nice videos explaining uh, the, some of the tricks. And if you have other questions, in addition to one, we will discuss. If you ask, now we'll do Any more questions? <coughs> no? All right. So thank you very much, Professor uh, Sebastian's mother. Thank you very much for all our panelists. Um, this will this bring us to the end of our ACS on campus today. We're now going to proceed to have lunch, at, to which you are kindly invited. You can continue your networking. Any other questions that you didn't dare to ask, you can ask now. Um, I would like to thank you very much for your participation and for staying with us all the way to the end. And um, I hope you take loads um, of useful tips with you back home. Um, and that you continue to be engaged with us. Um, of course, I would like to thank the, our host university, Claude Bernard, for having us here. Um, and just three things before we go to lunch. Number one, please keep an eye on your email next week because we're going to send you a little survey um, about how we can do this event better. Next time, we would like to have your feedback. Uh, number two, what was number two? Number two, yes, um, remember, uh, through today's event, ACS on Campus, remember you're entitled, if you wish to become an ACS member, remember you are entitled to a 50% discount on the fee. I'm not sure if it's 180, so divided by two. Um, just remember that by being a member, you also get 50% off when you want to publish open access, which is accumulative with the 25% you have because you are here at the university. Um, Claude Bernard. And the last point, uh, what was my last point? Oh, yes, of course. All of these resources that have been mentioned today, the videos or the links, you will also receive an email um, with a link to them. Um, and they are to be found, if you want to have a look now, at the ACS on Campus website. So having said that, please enjoy lunch and thank you so much again. Thank you.